Welcome to Norton Chemistry. Today we're going to look at the acids topic in module 2 of the A-level chemistry specification. I'll talk you through the key concepts and run through some example questions. Some examples of acid include HCl or hydrochloric acid, H2SO4 sulfuric acid, nitric acid and phosphoric acid. Acids dissociate in water by the equation HA aqueous forms A minus, which is the conjugate base, and H plus, and acids are proton donors. That's the bronsted lowry definition of an acid. The strength of an acid depends on how much it dissociates when it dissolves. So for example, a strong acid completely dissociates in water or aqueous solution. So HCl is an example of a strong acid. So you can see in the equation, we have a arrow pointing in the forwards direction only. So it's fully dissociating to form H plus and Cl minus ions. So we've got a question, which is to write the equations for the dissociation of H2SO4 in aqueous solution. So this is comprised of two equations because it has two H plus ions to donate. So the first equation is, and then the second equation is, we can simplify it to an overall equation of. Then a weak acid is one which only partially dissociates in water or aqueous solution. So for example, ethanoic acid, CH3COOH, is a weak acid. And you can see that in the equation for its dissociation, we have the reversible reaction symbol because there's an equilibrium forming where equilibrium is actually shifted to the left. So we're only for, for each amount of ethanoic acid, we're only forming a small number of H plus ions. Then bases, so we have some examples of bases, potassium hydroxide, sodium hydroxide, and ammonia, which is a weak base. The first two are strong bases. And alkalis are bases which dissociate in water. So we have the um, example equation of XOH, so the alkali, dissociating to form X plus and OH minus ions. So for example, NaOH dissociates to form Na plus and OH minus. And bases are defined as proton acceptors. So you can see in this equation that when we put N ammonia in water, it reacts with water forming NH4 plus ions and OH minus ions. So it's gone from NH3 to NH4 plus. That's a gain of one proton. So that's why bases are defined as proton acceptors. It's also an equilibrium because it's a weak base. So if we add more alkali, then the equilibrium will shift to the right and will form more hydroxide. Then the equilibrium will shift in the opposite direction to the left, forming more ammonia. And then we have neutralization reactions. So acids and bases react in neutralization reactions. So when an acid and a base react, they form a salt and water. And remember the definition of a salt is the product of a reaction in which H plus ions are replaced by ammonium or metal ions. And then we have acid carbonate reactions. So an acid and a carbonate react to form a salt, carbon dioxide gas and water. So in each example, H plus reacts with OH minus to form water. Given the overall ionic equation, H plus plus OH minus forms H2O. So if you have a look at this question, which equation does not represent a neutralization reaction? So in a neutralization reaction, an acid has to react with a base or we have to form water. As you can see from A, a metal is reacting with an acid, so that's not an acid-base reaction. And we're not forming water, so that's not a neutralisation reaction. So the correct answer is A. And if we have a look at B, C and D, we can see that we're forming H2O in C and D. And in B, ammonia is reacting with sulfuric acid to form a salt, so that's a neutralisation reaction. So titrations. Acid-base titrations are used to find the concentration of an acid or base sample. A known concentration of an X is gradually added to a known volume of X of unknown concentration until the solution is neutralised, the end point. A burette is used to gradually add the solution of known concentration, and a glass pipette is used to add a, volume, add a known volume of the solution of unknown concentration. We also use an indicator to cause a colour change at the end point, so that's the point of neutralisation in an acid-base titration. Calculations are used to determine the concentration. So we use the form we use the formula N equals CV, which is moles equals concentration times the volume, and moles equals mass over MR help us do titration calculations. 
So we've got uh, an example question. Which reagent would exactly neutralize 100 centimeters cubed of one mole per dm cubed H2SO4? So we can first find the number of moles of H2SO4, which is going to be 100 over 1,000 to convert to decimeters cubed, multiplied by one mole per dm cubed, which gives us 0.1 moles. And then if we have a look at the formula of H2SO4, it's diprotic because it's got two H plus arms in its formula. So we need, we, for all of our um, reactants, potential reactants, we've got the exact same number of moles, 0.1 moles. So we need a dibasic reagent. And if we look at BaOH2, that's the only one with two hydroxide ions for every uh, molecule of it. So that is the correct reagent. Preparing a standard solution, which is a solution of known concentration. So we need to do this in order to accurately get solutions of a precise concentration to use in our titrations, because otherwise our titrations won't be accurate. So magnesium nitrate is used in fertilizers as a source of nitrogen. A student plans to prepare 250 centimeters cubed of a 0.4 mole per dm cubed solution of magnesium nitrate. Starting from magnesium nitrate crystals, which are MgNO32 with six H2O molecules. Describe how the student would prepare the solution, giving full details of quantities, apparatus, and methods. Use the formula N equals CV, so that's moles is equal to 250 over 1000 to convert to decimeters cubed, multiplied by the concentration, which is 0.4 mole per dm cubed, which gives us 0.1 mole of magnesium nitrate crystals and then we have a molar mass of 256.3 grams per mole for our hydrated magnesium nitrate and if we do the, calculate the mass that's equal to the moles times the MR which is 0 0.1 moles times 256.3 grams per mole which gives us 25.63 grams and that's the mass that we'll use in our to get our standard solution. And then to prepare our standard solution, we first need to accurately weigh the mass of the crystals using the weigh by mass method. Then you need to dissolve the crystals in distilled water and transfer the crystals to a 250 centimeters cubed volumetric flask. So volumetric flasks has, have been specifically calibrated to hold a precise volume of solution at room temperature and pressure. You then need to rinse you then need to rinse any excess remaining solid from your beaker and your weighing boat into the flask using distilled water and then carefully make it up to the mark with more water so that the bottom of the meniscus aligns with the graduation line. And to help you do this carefully you can use the drop and prepare at the end. You can then stop her and invert the flask to help it mix thoroughly. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out my other videos. I've got other topic revision videos, past papers and exam question walkthroughs. Also, be sure to visit my website. You can purchase resources, including my A-level chemistry notes and my A-level chemistry flashcards, of which there are 899. You can also book a tutoring session to help give your grade an extra boost. Send me a message and I'll book you in straight away.